live from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18 in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We've got two guests for this panel. We have Katie Benedict, who is Director Advisory People and Change at KPMG, and Michelle Esposito, who is the AVP Technology Planning for JM Family Enterprises. Welcome, Katie and Michelle. Thank you for having us. So I want to start out with you, Michelle. Explain to our viewers what, what JM Family Enterprises is. Sure. Uh, JM Families, uh, we're a privately held company located in South Florida. We have about 4,200 associates across the country. And I describe us as a diversified automotive company. So we started uh, 50 years ago, it's actually our 50th anniversary, um, distributing Toyotas in the US. We were the first distributor, and we still distribute to the five southeastern states. But since then, we've um, grown and expanded into other sectors of the automotive industry, um, including auto finance and warranty and insurance products. Okay, so diversified portfolio of services. Yes. So recently you had, you had a situation, an implementation situation. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about it? And then I want you to chime in, Katie, with, with how you worked on it too. Sure. So we were an existing ServiceNow customer. We implemented the product back in 2011. And at the time, we really just tried to make it look like our old product. We wanted to minimize the disruption to the organization, so we said, let's just make it look and behave like the old product did. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, but with that, and with the change that happened over time, it became very complex to use, and it really just wasn't meeting our needs. So, um, after much, much consultation with a lot of experts in the field, we decided to re-implement ServiceNow. We believed in the platform, we believed in its capabilities and what it could do for us, but we needed to start over. So with that comes a lot of change for our organization. Um, people are used to doing things a certain way, they're used to the processes that we already had in place, so trying to get them on board and understand the why to what we were doing was really important. And Katie, that's where you fit in. So tell us a little bit about KPMG's approach to making this easier, because as Michelle said, we are human nature, we're just resistant to change, and when sort of, we like it the old way. It's, <laughs> this is hard. Yeah. So how, what, 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 can you tell us a little bit about your approach? Exactly, uh, we were thrilled that JM Family chose KPMG as our implementation partner, um, and really some of the things we brought specifically to the table for this re-implementation was um, some of our accelerators, our process packs, to really optimize the new processes that JM Family was using, but then also our organizational change management and learning and development capabilities. Um, we specialize in IT transformation from a people perspective, and a, a group of us specialize in service now. We've done, uh, well over 50 implementations of service now. So we wanted to look from that people perspective, how do we get the right level of buy-in? How do we make sure that people understand why we're doing the change, get that early, quick adoption, uh, a continuous feedback loop. We implemented a change agent network, which I, I found was one of the most effective things we could have done, especially at JM Family, given the nature of their organization and given some of the cultural considerations there. And it was a tremendous success there, I feel. I mean, they, the people there, the associates there, were so involved in the initiative um, and really partnered with our team um, as a single team. It wasn't JM Family and KPMG. It was one implementation team working together in tandem to make this change happen. So what did you, what did you learn in the sense of what were people's, what were the sticking points and then how did you overcome them? Yeah. Sure, I can take that. Um, as much as people were supportive of the re-implementation and really knew we needed to do it, we found that they were still very much embedded with the way we did it today. So uh, even going into this knowing what a huge change management effort it was, I was still surprised at how much effort we had to put into it. So it took a lot of communication, a lot of different methods of communication and engagement to get people to really understand what we were doing and why we were doing it. Um, repetition, really um, explaining it. The Change Agent Network um, was huge for us and we're, what we did there was we pulled in some of our bigger supporters and some of our detractors and they were able to kind of permeate the organization and in, in the different departments within IT to really help sell what we were doing, to bring back questions and concerns, so that was really key to what overcoming that. What was that like, bringing in the people who were really butting heads? I mean, and how do you, how do you navigate between those two yeah. factions? Yeah. 
It, honestly, I think it was great because um, I'd rather get that feedback while we're going through the process than hear about it later and have the implementation not be successful. So in some cases, when people brought that feedback that maybe wasn't so positive, it was just a matter of more communication, more training. But in other times, it was, you know, we really scratched our head and said, maybe we need to rethink about this. Maybe they've got something here and we may need to tweak our approach or do something a little differently. But it was, as Katie mentioned, the engagement level was phenomenal. So um, the positive and the negative, we really had a very engaged team. So coming out of this, Katie, what would you say are sort of the best practices for other leaders that are doing implementation, re-implementations and, and maybe dealing with some resistance? I would say definitely whether it's an implementation or a re-implementation, don't forget about your people. Um, the technology, especially ServiceNow, is, is, is fabulous and your processes generally are standard. You can align to idle processes, uh, but getting the adoption is really key. And so remembering that this is a transformation, it's not just an implementation of a technology. Um, paying attention to the people, making sure that they're on board, they know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what really what's in it the, for them is vital to making this a successful project. As you're looking at the, the ServiceNow platform and what you do for JM Family Enterprises, what do you see looking ahead as sort of ways you can augment and enhance? Oh, they have, they have a lot of ideas going forward right now, which is very exciting. It is, you know, we focused in, um, we're in a second phase implementation. Our first phase really focused on the core ITSM functions, and now we're dipping our toe into some other areas, um, the PPM suite, um, vendor management, performance analytics, so we're really continuing to, to mature um, our use of the product. And even looking beyond that, you know, we have interest in some of the security operations and um, even further than that into some of the financial management capabilities. So we definitely plan to continue to invest in the platform and, and see what, what it can do for us. You're, you're evolving just as, as ServiceNow is evolving yes, too. Yes, we are. Well, Michelle and Katie, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was great having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight, we will have much more of theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge18, hashtag No18, just after this.